Ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out in the Chicago Tribune. Monday, February 11th, 2019. You know, there's a lot of people very upset over this light sentence for shooting Laquan McDonald 16 times that Jason Van Dyke received. And it's now being challenged. And I'm glad to see this only because, see, you've got everybody in cahoots with each other. You have the prosecutor and the judge and the police, they're all in cahoots with each other. And when it comes down to sentencing, in my opinion, it should be done by someone outside of the system. These folks within the system are just way too corrupt and they are not going to do the right thing. We have seen this for centuries. These folks are never going to do the right thing. They're going to always try to either give no sentencing at all or the most lightest sentencing that don't match the crime that has happened, especially in this case. Shooting somebody 16 times, six and a half years, that is just a downright insult to everybody. <clears throat> especially the family of Laquan McDonald. Attorney General Special Prosecutor challenge Jason Van Dyke's sentence in petition to state Supreme Court. Good. Now, how far this will get? Well, we know we're still in the same corrupt system. This system has showed nothing but corruption for five straight centuries. It's not going to show anything at this point, but at least it's being challenged. Special prosecutors and the Illinois Attorney General's office are challenging former Chicago police officer Jason Van Dyke's prison sentence before the state's highest court. A petition filed Monday does not explicitly target the length of the nearly seven year sentence, which many activists have criticized as too lenient. But it does note that a significantly longer sentence would be justifiable under state law. Kane County State Attorney Joseph McMahon um, appointed to handle the Van Dyke case and Attorney General Kwame Raul argued that the petition that uh, Judge Vincent Gagan sentenced Van Dyke under improper legal guidelines. Van Dyke was convicted of one count of second degree murder and 16 counts of aggravated battery in 2014 on duty shooting of Laquan McDonald. He was sentenced last month of six and three quarter years in prison, which is not long enough. I mean, I don't care what anybody say. That is not a long enough sentence. Okay, there are people that commit robberies, unarmed robberies that get longer times than that. There are people that are in there for weed that get longer sentences than that. Gagan sentence Van Dyke only on the second degree murder conviction, ruling that it was the more serious offense and that the aggravated battery counts should merge into it for purposes of sentencing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they probably paid off that judge. You know, many of these people have ties to each other and I'm sure Gagan has seen many Chicago police officers in his courtroom before over cases, and he probably already knew who Jason Van Dyke was. But they, these, and, and see what you gotta watch are these police unions. These police unions will set things up like this so those cops don't go to jail for long periods of time. And they'll pay off these judges. It is more serious for Laquan McDonald to be shot by a firearm, or it is more serious for Laquan McDonald to be murdered by a firearm. Gagan acts from the bench before imposing sentence. That is stupid. This judge, he doesn't need to be a judge. 
He needs to be removed. Common sense come to an easy answer on that in this specific case. But the, uh, the petition argues that the state law actually makes aggravated battery a more serious offense. And therefore, the state Supreme Court should order Gagan to uh, resentence the ex-patrol officer. The court should also direct Gagan to determine which of the 16 gunshot wounds cause severe bodily injury. And remember, uh, Van Dyke was trying to reload. The 16 was not enough for him. And sentence him to consecutive prison terms for each corresponding count. Prosecutors have argued that at least two of the wounds caused the kind of injury which the petition contends means Van Dyke should face a minimum sentence of 18 years six years for each of those two wounds, plus six more years for the other 14 counts. An aggravated battery with a firearm conviction carries a sentence of six to 30 years in prison. But even if Gagan is ordered to resentence on aggravated battery counts, he could impose the same sentence or even a lighter one if he finds that only one gunshot caused severe bodily harm, according to Robert Loeb, a longtime defense attorney who teaches at DePaul University College of Law. In a scenario, he could potentially give Van Dyke just six years. So why can't you get this judge off of the case? Why does the same judge have to do the resentencing? If you see corruption in what the judge is doing, you need to get rid of the judge. Obviously, he's not going to do the right thing. Conceivably, he might find a way to say that only one gunshot caused the bodily harm. Loeb said, probably it's more likely that there would be a finding of more than one shot causing a requisite harm and therefore a higher sentence. Inmates convicted of aggravated battery with a firearm must serve at least 85% of their sentences, far higher than the 50% required by a second degree murder conviction. Van Dyke's attorney may file an objection to the prosecutor's filing within seven days, unless the higher court sets a different deadline. The Supreme Court is not obligated to accept the prosecutor's petition, and there is no time frame in which it must issue a ruling if it does. You know, so what y'all got to do in Chicago is work hard to get this judge off of the bench. That's what you, if you can't see no way of giving Jason Van Dyke's murdering ass a long Print, uh, sentence, then six and three quarter years, then y'all have to work hard to get rid of Gagan. He's got to go. Gagan or whatever the hell his name is, it don't matter. The bottom line is you in Chicago, you know who this judge is. You got to get rid of him. Get his ass off the bench. Don't let him sentence any more police officers to, you know, these light sentences that don't fit the crime. They must go. Van Dyke's appellate attorney said the prosecutor's uh, petition is an attempt to turn the Illinois Supreme Court from a deliberative body into a political battleground. The filing also opens up a Pandora box of legal issues that in the long term could result in grossly excessive unjust sentences for defendants that follow in the wake of this request. As a statement from attorneys, Darren O'Brien and Jennifer Blagg, you know what, who cares? You know, we know police officers do not get excessive sentences in this country, unless they're black officers, of course. And, you know, then they get these astronomical sentences, but nobody else on that police force seems to get that. 
After the Attorney General's office last month announced it's conducting a review of the sentence, Van Dyke's trial attorney, uh, Daniel Herbert, blasted the decision as politically motivated. And allegation Raul on Monday said was nonsense. So, you know, they're just arguing back and forth. So they initially requested in the um, sentencing of Jason Van Dyke 18 to 20 years in prison. And that's really what he should get, you know. And obviously this judge is not going to do it. So if this petition to the Supreme Court fails, then Jason Van Dyke could be walking out in three, six and three quarter years which we know is not the right sentence, but this is America and this is how their rigged up system works. The system is always rigged against us and in their favor. And it doesn't matter even if you're the victim, the system is rigged against you. And you can see that in many of these cases of cops getting acquitted for the most egregious crimes you've ever seen. You see them getting barely any prison time, like you see in the case of Jason Van Dyke. And there are thousands of cases across America where we see this repeated over and over and over. Okay. You know, there are lists. You can go to different sites of all these cops walking away. The stories are out there. So it is no point in you trolls coming to challenge anything because, because the stories can be pulled up all over the internet of these cops being um, found of doing no wrongdoing for murdering people unarmed or they get to walk away altogether. So it's stupid to, it's silly for you to even think you can challenge it as if we can't find this information. Get the hell out of here. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Am I hopeful about this thing turning around? No because that is really the given pattern in America, not to ever punish people based on race, not to give them the appropriate sentence for the crime they commit because of race. This is not political. It's all about race. The victim was black, the cop was white. That's what it's all about. Peace, family.